Hey everybody, before I get started, I just wanted to mention a couple of ways that you can engage with me on a more personal level. I have a few avenues set up and I keep focusing on one and I figured, why don't I make a short little video talking about all of them real quick before we get into these uh, episodes. So first thing, Patreon. There's a link in the episode description and every episode description to the Patreon, as well as uh, a video on the feed called Major Announcement that has all the details of what each tier offers and how much they cost. I implore you to check that out. I offer a lot of cool shit for my patrons. Uh, second thing, the Discord channel. There's also a Discord link in the episode description and in every episode description. I have multiple channels set up there for each show that I'm covering, and it's a great way to just engage with me. I have a channel set up for... Uh, uh, MMA talk as well. I'm a big MMA fan. So if you're an MMA fan, you can check that out as well. There's a link to the discord in the episode description. And then lastly, oh, the Facebook and Twitter, social media, follow me on there. I post news on there. When I say news, I mean like, hey, I'm stopping covering this show. Hey, I'm starting covering this show. Let me know what you think about this. I do uh, live watches of things on Facebook where like I'll check in and say, I'm watching so-and-so show. And then I'll like live comment while I'm watching it. And that'll be cool if maybe you watch that show too and you want to watch along with me or you're watching it later and you want to see my thoughts, which are usually pretty entertaining because I'm usually pretty high when I'm writing them. So uh, check out all those links in each episode description and let's talk about this episode. Peace. One mic, one mic. Yeah. All I need is one mic. One mic. Yeah. All I need is one mic. Hey everybody, welcome back to One Mic, where I watch it so you don't have to. And today I'm here to talk about Season 1, Episode 5 of FX and Hulu's Kindred, entitled Winnie. Uh, now, for the first time, the episode title does seem to revolve around the main focus of the episode, so... Uh, <laughs> huzzah! <laughs> uh, so, Winnie is the new slave on the Wayland Plantation after Kevin and uh, Dana return after the events of the end of the last episode where they left out of the... Uh, hospital room closet. Don't get me started again. Uh, it's been three years since they were last there and Winnie was purchased in the interim. She also does seem to be a uh, uh, concubine for uh, Tom as well. But I want to start, and as much as it pains me to do this, I want to start by again expressing my disappointment with this episode. You know, in addition to a few moments that took me out of it, this episode was pretty boring and uneventful for the most part. You know, I'm now halfway, I'm now beyond halfway through this season. And I'm still not even really sure where this show is going, let alone whether or not it's going to be something more than just a tropey time travel show set on a plantation. And, you know, this episode irritated me right away and kind of just kept that the whole time. So, like... Immediately upon Kevin and Dana returning, they're like, we have to find Rufus. Let's split up. I really can't overstate how Dana and Kevin underreacting to their circumstances is infuriating me. Why the fuck would you split up? Like, they keep acting as if every, like, white person on this plantation has a level head or would take a sensible approach in how they interact with Dana. And I just don't see... Any of the way Tom treats, like, Kevin or Dana, I don't see any of that as plausible, especially given, like, the strange confidence that she has when she's there. You know, I said earlier, I think it was probably, I think it was probably video one or two, or the video covering episodes one and or two, that maybe this is a strategy meant to show uh, Dana having strength while she's back in this, in this time period, right? They even have a moment in this episode where she's crying and she's, like, cuts it off. And I think they're trying to show us strength, maybe, but maybe it's the acting performance. It's like she doesn't come off strong at all. She just comes off like stubborn, naive, and immature. And and like they played that angle with her in 2016. So it's like when I see her behaving that same way in 1815, I'm not now interpreting her behavior as strong. I'm interpreting it as continued immaturity, continued obliviousness, continued like implausibility of what I'm seeing on the screen from the writers. And it's just, I don't know, man. I'm like, I'm not really in a place where I'm going to continue to 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 write it off as something other than what it feels like or what it seems like. And I just can't get with Dana walking in and just be like, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm not sure how you, uh, we don't need to do that with, uh, with Rufus's leg. Like, I just don't understand why she feels, like, I, I don't even want to say feels confident enough 
to speak in that scenario, the scenario where she she interjected in Tom and the doctor's conversation, it's not strength, it's stupidity. And like, I don't understand why I think, I, it feels to me like the writers want to portray stupidity as strength. And I, like that, that doesn't work. You know, it, I, I know you want to show like these strong female characters, and but like that's not a strong female character that someone with a death sentence and treating it as something other than that makes me feel like you don't understand that or you hope that I won't. And like that, that just doesn't work for me. Uh, you know, so once they find Rufus, it appears that he's drunk, but it comes out that Sarah put something in the icing of the cake that Winnie baked in order to essentially get her up out of there. Like, you know, show that she can't bake for shit and they'll get her out of there. The The cake is what actually made Rufus sick. And it also causes all of the the Whalen family, everyone who has this, this dinner, to be puking their guts out uh, right at the dinner table afterwards. And it also comes out at dinner that Rufus was with Carrie at this time because, it, again, they still believe it's because he drank too much. And this prompts Margaret to uh, essentially demand that Kara and Sarah, Carrie and Sarah be sold. Uh, you know, she's just like, you know, I, I don't want this... Uh, <laughs> this bad influence of a negress around my son. And uh, Tom seems to agree to that, but I'm going to come back to that in a moment. Uh, also, in this episode, Olivia tells Dana that she intends on staying uh, in 1815 and moving with Alice to Maryland. She then tells Dana to stop focusing on her, her being Olivia, and to focus on how she can help, which seems kind of to be, you know, like another way of saying... Focus on why you keep coming here in the first place. Like, you're being sent here for a reason. It ain't to bring me back because I ain't going. So figure out how you can help somebody while you're here. Then for some reason, Dana takes the advice of help people as a cue to throw Winnie under the bus in exchange for Carrie. <laughs> it's because she believes Carrie has its importance. But, like, that's not helping people. Like, you're encouraging a slave to escape who is in good graces with the master because like me likes to fuck her. She, he, she's in, in, in the best, the best circumstances that a slave could be in. You are convincing her to put herself in mortal danger for the benefit of Carrie, AKA from Dana's perspective, the benefit of herself because she thinks that Carrie is one of her ancestors. And this is to, you know, help make sure that she's born. This does not read to me as helping people. Like, that's your, your purpose for coming back to ensure that you were born. So it's like, yo, we got to get Winnie killed so Carrie can stay here and I can be born. That doesn't read as, to help as me. I mean, that doesn't read as help to me. I, I Man, I'm... <laughs> me and, like, as I start to turn up more, my words get a little bit... It's like I, I float from, like, really well-spoken to, like, a verbal dyslexic. But anyway, <laughs> um... I don't really have any questions coming out of this episode, so I'm going to skip to what did we learn, and then we're going to close with some thoughts. Uh, so for starters, we learned that Dana believes, as I've already mentioned, that she is the offspring of Rufus and Carrie, solely because Denise told her that Carrie is a family name. Now, how a first name, especially one as common as Carrie, can be considered a family name is beyond me, but not. it's even more crazy how Dana runs with it. <laughs> like, oh, like she's she presents uh the idea of 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 herself being the offspring of Carrie and Rufus to Kevin as fact like oh uh, I was told that Carrie is a family name so I must be like and goes to this logical conclusion in her mind that's a logical conclusion in mine it is not but I don't know I, even if I look at it as like maybe a slave being named Carrie, like that could be looked at as a family name because they probably don't have like Carrie Jenkins as a slave. It's probably just like Carrie or whoever, whatever the fuck you want to call them, right? But st I still don't think, even if that's the case, I still don't see how you can then glean that Carrie is a family name and then and then deduce that this must be a descendant of yours. Like even if even if the family name was Jenkins or something like that, right? Like Jenkins is a family name. Oh, there's a Jenkins on this plantation. You, it's still too common of a last name for you to assume that's your ancestors. Like, I just, I don't, I don't buy that. I don't believe that. But I also, it's, it's not because I don't think that they put the case forward. It's because I think it's a red herring. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to double down on Rufus and Dana getting together. Uh, you know, I, I've mentioned this as a theory before that essentially uh, Rufus and Dana either end up consensually or non unconsensually, non-consensually, um, having sex and having a baby 
and that that baby is like kind of like the like essentially Dana created herself uh more or less um and I know that might seem far-fetched but I feel like at this point it feels for me like damn near a certainty that Dana's gonna return it's gonna it will have been you know a day or two in 2016 she's gonna come back it will have been years Rufus is now an adult and uh they're gonna end up together and Dana is like her own offspring and I think I think that's why she's being sent back to prevent, like she said, to prevent her to make ensure that she exists, but not by throwing Winnie under the bus uh, to preserve Carrie. To she's there to save Rufus to make sure that he grows up to be the guy that she fucks. That's what I think is is the case. And you know, I I think I kind of presented it in a tongue in cheek kind of way when I said it, but like I said, right now I'm doubling down on it. I believe that to be the case because. Um, there's a couple of scenes in this episode that even kind of pointed that direction. Like Kevin tells Dana that Rufus loves her and then says, uh, I got some competition or something to that effect. Uh, now we take from this scene that Dana looks at that as kind of like an admission of love and they end up having sex. And that I think that's what we're meant to take from it. But I took from it the declaration that Rufus loves her as kind of like a clue that when he grows up, they're going to have something going on. And you think like, okay, this whole time he's been a kid, but like that's, that, that's the reason I think for the, uh, disparity in time, like how, you know, a few minutes in one place can be years in the other is so that they can ultimately build up to, let's say Dana's 25, 25 year old Dana showing up when Rufus is now 25. Cause it's only been a couple of days for her, but it's been years for him. I think they're setting that up. And then also when Margaret tells Rufus, uh, that perhaps it's time for him to find a wife in this episode. Dana is watching in the background from outside the room and Margaret sees her reflection in the mirror. And to me, that's just like classic foreshadowing. You're saying, maybe you should find a wife. And then like Dana's like in the background. Like to me, that's pretty classic foreshadowing that I think that they're they're going to end up together. Um, Waylon, well, we learned that Waylon, as I said, he, as I suggested anyway, that he blackmailed that Brodus guy into selling his lawn uh, in exchange for keeping the secret about his sexuality. Pretty underwhelming reveal, but hey, that's what that's what it was. And then we, like I mentioned earlier, we learned that Olivia doesn't intend on going home. She plans on going to Maryland. Uh, now I'm going to close up with some thoughts, and that'll be it for episode five. Um, I don't know when I'm going to get videos up for six, seven, and eight. I know I said today uh, that's probably not going to happen today. I'm going to stop making promises so that I continue so that I don't continue to fail to live up to them. But um, yeah, only three episodes left. Uh, I think 1923 coming out yesterday kind of threw me off a little bit as far as that goes. But um, it's it's my primary focus here to finish these last three. So uh, closing out with thoughts, uh, Dana promises Kevin that he won't get stuck there. And I think that ensures that he will get stuck there. Uh, maybe that's that's part of how she ends up with Rufus. Like maybe Kevin gets stuck there and he ends up dead and that's how she ends. And then she ends up with Rufus. I don't know, but uh, pretty sure Kevin's going to get stuck there. Um, Olivia doubting her ability to go back was weird. Like, and when I say weird, I mean stupid. <laughs> um, so Dana shows her the ring that Olivia gave her in the previous episode. She's like, look, this went back and forth. So you can too. And then she goes, that's just a hunk of metal. Kevin's not a hunk of metal, and you know that he's been back and forth. You saw him leave. Like, I just... Sometimes I know. Sometimes I just feel like the writers are just, like, not even paying attention to what they wrote on the last page when they write. Like, I just... What do you mean that's just a hunk of metal? Like, you know Kevin's going back and forth. Like... Anyway, they're really playing up this fake pregnancy with Dana as well, and I'm wondering if that has a, a purpose. Cause it's weird. Like we all know they're not, she's not pregnant. They know she's not pregnant, but they keep having these scenes that continue to, to play that up. I don't know where they're going with that. And I'm hoping that it's somewhere because otherwise I'm going to wonder like the whole scene with Sarah, she's like, didn't you have a baby when you was last year? Like, why could she just be like, nah, I was just fucking around. I wasn't pregnant. Like, like, they, like you have no reason to, to keep that lie up with Sarah. And she's like, I lost it. And she, like, and then she gets this hug. She has this moment. I'm like, why are you lying about this? Like, I just, I don't know. And then lastly, I I, I want to close with this because I've come to this decision. I don't like Kevin. 
I just, I just don't. I don't like the character. I don't like the actor. Uh, I, I, I've tried and I just can't. And I don't want to fault the guy for having like a weird voice, but like his, t his character's like timidity and uh, aloofness, it just really just takes me out of it. You know, it's hard for me to take him seriously when he kind of seems like a big child that's auditioning for the role every time he talks. Like he doesn't feel like he's a character, like an actor doing this character. It feels like it's like a nervous audition. You know, him and Dana have zero chemistry. For whatever reason, the thoughters, the writers thought it made sense. Again, here's me me criticizing the writers again. Made sense to have us watch them have sex. It's like, okay, a black woman went back in time to 1815 and she's fucking a white man who, who they are pretending is her master in the master's house on the plantation. Why do, like, why? Like, why do you, why would you, why would you write that? Like, I don't, like, what? And then it's like, I, I, and I know they see it as a, a, the culmination of this romance that they built up that, that they haven't. Like, you're, you're selling me on this terrible romance. And it's like, hard pass, I'm not buying the romance. So now the sex comes off as just out of touch. Like, you just don't understand what you're putting into your show. And like, that just... I don't know, man, that just kind of, it didn't bother me a ton, but like it bothered me. It was also because it was on the heels of like, again, just feeling like the writers of this show do not, I'm not going to say they don't understand because that's, that's diminutive in a way that I don't want to be. I don't feel like they're properly concerned with how these people should be behaving. Like in, in that same scene where they end up having sex, Dana comes into the room, you know, he's already asleep in the bed, Kevin is, he's not, I don't know if he's asleep, but he's in the bed, nothing but his drawers on, got his iPhone and headphones sitting on the, sitting on the side table, she walks in, takes her coat off, like she just came in from a hard day's work at Walmart, gets in the bed, they end up having sex, I'm like, you are on a plantation and you are a black woman, why are you acting like shit is sweet? Like, I just, I can't fuck with that. Like, she keeps acting like this shit is normal and it's not. And she, I don't know why she thinks that she can move the way she can move. And I don't know why the writers are creating this world where she can move the way she moves. But it's just not plausible to me. Like, she, like I said, she came home, like, like she came back like that was her crib. Like, that was her room. Way too fucking comfortable. How did she even get in? Because don't nobody in that house like her. They tolerate Kevin. They don't fuck with her. How does she just come in after hiding Winnie while, you know, while Winnie's missing, coming in the middle of the night, casually taking off her stuff? Like, I'm just, I don't know, man. I, I, they need to do something compelling, exciting, whatever, like, it's something that makes sense that doesn't piss me off like why the fuck would you do that like this needs to take a turn in these final three episodes because i can already tell you right now no matter what happens in these last three this show ain't touching no kind of top nothing list for me it's not making shit and it might end up in a place where i'm shitting on it like it like it, it's very close another episode like this one i'm gonna be shitting on this show so, like, they need to get their act together. They need to realize that they're on a fucking plantation in the 1800s and that Dana's a black woman and that she can't walk around and she's the goddamn supervisor on the plantation. Like, that don't make any fucking sense. So, like, they need to get that shit together. They need to make these episodes interesting, put these people in some serious danger. You know, we had the, the, the shock and the fright of, like, oh, my God, they're back on a plantation. But they're acting like shit is sweet, so why wouldn't I? Why, why would I have any kind of suspense watching this when the characters who are 200 years in the past on a plantation don't even give a fuck and take it seriously. Why should I? So, like, make this shit serious. Make this shit important. Have it move. Have it stop feeling slow. Have these characters start doing stuff that makes sense. Or I'm going to stop feeling bad about shitting on the show. And I'm going to, like... I'm gonna look like my fuck, like the fucking avatar for the uh for the channel. The one of me screaming at the <laughs> screaming at the desk is gonna be that. So like that's all I got for uh let me make sure that's all I got. Uh okay, no, the, the, I didn't miss one sentence, but it was it was me continuing to complain about <laughs> about them shoehorning in this romance with Kevin and Dana. Uh, when no one involved should be thinking about fucking. So uh, that's all I got. I will see you guys. I don't know. Um, maybe you about t maybe tomorrow night, Tuesday night, uh, for at least a video for episode six. But ideally, 
ideally all three. I'm gonna try, I promise. I'm gonna try, I don't know, we'll see. It, it, it actually, <laughs> it might largely rely on how good episode six is. Like if it's good enough, I'm like, okay, let's go. Or if it's another episode that pisses me off. If it's another one that pisses me off, you might just get episode six tomorrow. But we'll see. I'm gonna wrap up and stop rambling. I will see you guys soon. Peace.